Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, August 25th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. He even said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors. Hillary delays a coughing fit long enough to name drop Alex Jones. Then, Julian Assange says he has new info that could swing the election if it catches fire. And the University of Chicago tells Trigley Puffs, we do not condone your safe space. That's next. <laughs> It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. He even said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors, and no one was actually killed there. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how dark their heart must be to say things like that. Hillary Clinton is absolutely terrified. She is trying to divert attention away from her own scandals, and she's also recognizing the fact that she is losing the black and minority vote. So she comes out today with this speech trying to tie Donald Trump in with the KKK. Now, of course, she name dropped Alex Jones because she's absolutely terrified of the fact that sites like Infowars and Breitbart are controlling the narrative even when she owns the establishment media. Here's Alex Jones with the quid pro quo. Earlier today, Hillary Clinton, the individual who openly stole the Democratic Party nomination from Bernie Sanders, gave a press conference in Reno, Nevada, where she attacked the resistance to her takeover of this country by foreign banks, the Saudi Arabian government, the communist Chinese and others. Make no mistake, that's who this lady is. That's what her foundation is. She's in deep trouble. She knows the emails are coming out from patriotic Americans inside intelligence agencies exposing her crimes. And she came out and attacked the free press. She came out and told lie after lie and said Donald Trump wouldn't disavow David Duke. It was crazy. It was total lies. It was a thousand times more ridiculous than Bill Clinton saying I didn't have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. And then she did it. She came out and misrepresented and spun and basically twisted what I've actually said. She lied to the people, not just the U.S., but the world, and said that when I talk about 9-11 being an inside job, that the whole government did it. Or that I say that no children died at Sandy Hook and they were all actors. I've never said any of those things. Sure, they've edited videos together to misrepresent, but it's just as big a lie as saying that Donald Trump likes David Duke. It's a fraud. Look at her when she holds her own heart and talks about how I have this dark heart, how I'm the evil person. You're the one that went in and made Libya become a failed state. You're the person that helped create that Al-Qaeda stronghold that morphed into ISIS. You and Obama are the individuals that backed the jihadi fighters that Saudi Arabia was funding that went into Syria and have killed hundreds of thousands of innocent Christians and others. Donald Trump's right about you being the founder of ISIS, just like I'm right from reading the congressional report from 2002 where Congress said Saudi Arabia ran 9-11 and that bipartisanly the government stood down because of the embarrassment and covered it up. That's what I mean by 9-11 is an inside job. And yes, I'm a pioneer of exposing that. And I'm so proud of General Flynn and Donald J. Trump and others that are coming out now and exposing this. So on that front, you have been proven to be the founder of ISIS, 
and your attempt to spin it and claim that we're blaming firefighters or police and claiming the whole government was involved is a fraud. Criminal traitors like Hillary Clinton, whose number one funding group is the Saudi Arabians, who ran 9-11, those are the people that are guilty. What they've done here is build a straw man. They have created a fake Alex Jones, and they are putting words in his mouth. They can't find anywhere where I have said that I know the kids killed at Sandy Hook were actors or that it didn't even happen. I've hosted debates between people who say the story's true 100% and those that say the whole thing is a fabrication. I've been criticized by the leading conspiracy theorist out there claiming the whole thing was fake because I don't buy into that, but I do believe PR campaigns jumped on top of it and did put out disinformation and did spin some things. And Anderson Cooper got caught using a blue screen when he was back in New York uh, and D.C., not there in Sandy Hook. Stuff CNN's been caught doing back in the first Gulf War. So I'm there showing where they're taking a crisis and making it worse to go after our Second Amendment rights, and they turn that into, I'm saying no kids died there? You are a damn liar, Hillary Clinton. She made other allegations that are just as twisted, just as distorted. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to go there. I just want Hillary Clinton to know this. I care about my family. I care about this country. I care about every person on this planet who has red blood, regardless of what their supposed race is. We're all the human race. And I know Donald Trump cares about that as well. For you to say I've got a black heart when you are a known war criminal and a warmonger who has backed Sunni ISIS al-Qaeda operatives all over the world is the height of hypocrisy. Hillary, the facts are coming out that the military was ordered to aid Wahhabist al-Qaeda slash ISIS operatives. And our military said no in the last four years to you and Obama's orders. And General Flynn, the former head of defense intelligence, has gone public and exposed the fact that they were ordered to support al-Qaeda and ISIS and said no. So no matter what you pull, no matter what you try, that information has already come out. In the interest of time, I want to end this response to your lies by showing clips of you recently saying that Donald Trump is a racist and connected to the KKK with no evidence. It's the oldest play in the Democratic playbook. Through it all, he has continued pushing discredited conspiracy theories with racist undertones. And going to accuse decent Americans who support this campaign, your campaign, of being racists, which we're not. When you yourself and your own husband went to the funeral of Robert Byrd, who was a grand dragon, a national leader of the KKK, and basically said, oh, he only did it so he could get elected. Just like you've done all this evil stuff to get elected. That is incredible. You're up there kissing Robert Byrd. You love him. You call him a mentor. There's no photographs of Donald Trump with David Duke. There's the, he decried him decades ago. He's never supported him. But you paint him with that brush of lies. And then you attack Trump for wanting to build a wall when Mexico has a wall. And when you, in the 1990s, and the 2000s, as late as 2008, said build a wall, deport people that are here illegally. Look, I voted uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a, uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. You're a liar, you're a fraud, you're a hypocrite, and you've sold out to foreign interests, Hillary Clinton, and no amount of desperate damage control is going to work. Hillary, I'm really proud of the fact that during your lengthy press conference, you looked really shook up when you talked about yours truly. And I hope you're shook up because you know you're dealing with somebody who is committed and will never stop what I'm doing. And you know that I see you and I know what you've done. And I know how you called black people animals that need to be brought to heel and who were super predators. I know you're part of the Dixie Mafia. I know the Klan financed your first campaigns from the people that were there. I know who you are. And as an American and as a patriot, I'm not scared of you, bully. 
because no matter what you do, you're never going to kill these ideas. Because to quote V from Vendetta, ideas are bulletproof. And this movement of true Americana renaissance and the new enlightenment, classical liberalism that you call right-wing extremism cannot be stopped. And of course, Hillary Clinton is using the KKK rhetoric because she knows that the weaponized word, it's gonna stir up all sorts of racial tension. But it was actually Hillary Clinton who counted as her friend and mentor the exalted Cyclops, Senator Robert Byrd. So he was a KKK leader who once called black people mongrels. So after he died, Hillary Clinton said that she was going to continue to count on his advice even after he died. Um, and let's not forget that her husband at Senator Robert Byrd's funeral was actually making excuses for his joining the KKK. He was a country boy from the hills and hollows of West Virginia. He was trying to get elected. And maybe he did something he shouldn't have done. And he spent the rest of his life making it up. So that's Bill Clinton saying you have to join the, K the KKK in order to get elected as a Democrat. So does that mean he joined them as well? And let's not forget that in her touching eulogy for Senator Robert Byrd, Clinton praised the senator as a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility and even said that he had the heartbeat of America. Are you kidding me? She's the racist. She's the fraud. And she wants to divert attention away from the fact that her Clinton Foundation is a total sham. It's a total slush fund. And also these emails tying Huma Abedin in with not only a radical Muslim uh, journal, but also they were posting a lot of anti-Semitic stuff as well. So she wants to divert attention away from her top aide, Huma Abedin, being tied to this radical uh, minority Muslim uh, affairs journal here uh, that her mother was kind of the head of as well with ties to the Muslim Brotherhood and Saudi Arabia. She wants to divert attention away from the fact that Saudi Arabia is funding her campaign. Meanwhile, the 28 pages expose the fact that Saudi Arabia had uh, some high level Saudi Arabian officials here in the U.S. Um, had some ties with 9-11. So the fact that Hillary Clinton would dare even bring that up as a potential false flag was incredibly stupid in her speech today. And then she also goes on to say uh, that about the Clinton Foundation, that that's a lot of smoke, but no fire in regards to all the stories coming out about the Clinton Foundation. And this was on CNN's um, Anderson Cooper AC360 broadcast, because this is the, she considers this a press conference, okay? The fact that she's going on selecting her establishment media personalities that she'll agree to talk with. So she goes on there saying there's it's a lot of smoke, but no fire. These are people I was proud to meet with. Well, let's take a little, uh, a little travail over here to what Judicial Watch has to say about these emails. Um, just one specifically, this is uh, the Crown Prince of Bahrain. He was forced to go through the foundation to see Clinton. So this was Prince Salman of Bahrain. He requested a meeting with the Secretary of State Clinton, but he was forced to go through the Clinton Foundation for an appointment. Abedin advised him that when she went through normal channels at state, Clinton declined to meet. After Band intervened, however, the meeting was set up within 48 hours. So yeah, she's really happy to meet with these people as long as they donate a lot of money to the Clinton Foundation and then she can meet up with you lickety split. She's got all the time in the world for you. Now we spoke with filmmaker and philanthropist Gary Haven about what he saw with his own eyes, what the Clinton Foundation didn't do for Haiti. They must have tried to go through the proper channels. Uh, 10 days after the earthquake in Haiti, uh, I was over there with my aircraft and uh, the goal was to bring in a doctors to help these people and to take orphans back to the hospitals in, in Miami. And I'd be, I've been over there so many times I can't even count anymore. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I've been feeding 10,000 children a day in Haiti. We wow. ship over beans and corn and rice. And uh, uh, so I've had a firsthand account. Uh, a couple other interesting things I've done. I flew George Bush over uh, in my aircraft, met with the current president of Haiti, uh, and, and, and got to see an inside from the presidential palace of, of, of who was doing what in, in the environment. And by the way, I took Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul, who's a, an eye surgeon, over last November. And uh, he and two other surgeons uh, uh, were able to remove cataracts from the, the from the 200 elderly, desperately poor Haitians. Mm. One day they were blind and had been many for 20 years. 
and the next day they could see. So uh, Amazing. I know what it is to get things done over there. Uh, uh, but but I tell you what, I've I've watched the Clinton Foundation raise hundreds of millions of dollars specifically for Haiti. And I'm going to tell you, I've never seen any evidence uh, uh, that they've spent money on the Haitians. Uh, Senator Paul told me that uh, 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 people who had studied this had found that 96% of the money that was given to the Clinton Foundation for Haiti relief, 96% was spent on the Clintons, on family member salary, on exotic travel. Uh, you know, for someone who, who takes their money and, and gives it to, to, to help the, 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 the poor, the widows, the children, the starving, to see the blatant theft that the Clintons have, have done with the Haiti Initiative uh, is it, just incredible. Welcome back. Now, we saw Hillary Clinton absolutely in a desperate offensive move to try to take out Alex Jones, name dropped him in her speech today. Uh, but they are shaking in their boots at the fact that even though they own all of the media that's out there, mm -hmm. sites like Infowars and Breitbart are controlling the narrative. So that is why they are coming out like this. They want to take this down, cut down the free speech that's out there, and keep people corralled to those establishment media <clears throat> sources that they control, that they run and own. Now, Margaret Howell joins me in studio. Now, Margaret, we know something like six corporations own all of the media that's out there. They own it all. They control it all. They give you this false sense that you're being represented by the left and also by the right here with Fox News. But that's not always the case, is it? It's not, and it's unfortunate. You know, you and I pay very close attention to the information coming out, specifically out of Fox News, and they reel you in with a conservative tagline. They have some conservative commentary. You, they make you think that they're telling you the truth, and then it's almost like it's controlled opposition because uh, good info comes out, and then they they start to demoralize and bash Trump, distort it, and demoralize his supporters. And it's really interesting. If I didn't know any better, Leanne, I think that they were reeling us in because of the the conservative, tr you know, some truth, some element, and then we see Trump bashers, and then they, they go automatically into the Hillary uh, narrative. It's very strange, and I was doing some research on this today. The Murdoch-Clinton connection, it's never acknowledged. We need to understand that Murdoch, who's behind Fox, is a major Hillary donor, Hillary supporter, and uh, look, if his, if his network didn't have that conservative tagline all the time, he'd lose a massive amount of viewership. And look what they did to Roger Ailes. I know we're going to get into this in a second, but effectively countering CNN by bringing in beautiful women to dominate media. Then he's also he's obviously a Trump supporter. We can't have that Trump narrative anymore. Get off the stage, you molester. They've effectively right. ruined him. Yeah, uh, all these women. All, and I'm not saying that that kind of impropriety did not happen. Right. But we it's all coming out right now. Now's the time mm -hmm. to attack. We're not going to protect him anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we've been seeing this growing divide between uh, ultra conservatives and and the Roger Ailes there of Fox News. So Alex Jones has talked about the coup that's going on within Fox News, <laughs> and their ratings are kind of taking a hit because people are seeing that they can't go to Fox News for fair and balanced coverage. A lot of conservatives really started to see this uh, with the fact that they weren't giving fair coverage to Dr. Ben Carson as well as Donald Trump. They were really pushing out the establishment candidates, mm -hmm. and people could see that. That's absolutely right, namely Jeb Bush. I remember when this election cycle first started, they were they were so unfair towards Trump. Everything that he did was so was so uh, censored and weird and contorted. It was bizarre, and yet they still had the conservative tagline. So it was really confusing. You're like, wait a second. Well, I identify with your politics on some level, but then you're, you're taking me in a new direction. It's very layered, layered information. I don't know if there's a direct order, uh, but you can absolutely see it. It's like they reel you in with Sean Hannity, then they smack you with Megyn Kelly. That's what mm -hmm. happens. I think. Right. Well, I mean, I, this was something that I noticed, of course, when Glenn Beck was a part of Fox News, and he was very, very outspoken against Ron Paul. What a weirdo, what a freak, what a crazy person. Oh, my goodness. And then as soon as Ron Paul was no longer a threat, Glenn Beck, that was when he changed, was right after Ron Paul was no longer a threat, and that was when all of a sudden he said, you know what? This Tea Party might be onto something. Maybe we should have voted in Ron Paul. And then all of a sudden he became the Tea Party's uh, spokesperson, and he does the exact same thing. He gives you just a, enough truth so that you kind of gain that trust, but then he reels it back in or diverts 
you know, gives you those, brings you back to those talking points. That's absolutely right. And you know, there are some elements of Fox News that we, I watch personally and respect and admire. Of course. And seeing Hannity in Austin, you know, I really, I couldn't, I was, I kept standing to my feet and applauding. I'm like, finally, somebody who isn't afraid to say what they think. But we've seen mainstream media, Leanne, you know, people that are, are even remotely attacking Hillary Clinton, they're censored, fired, let go. Uh, their reputations are destroyed. It's amazing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. They can't do it here. But they're certainly doing every everywhere else they're doing it. Right. And uh, and we'll just kind of touch briefly on an article up at Infowars.com. Globalists turn Libertarian Party against liberty. Now, a lot of people have been Facebooking me or they're on Twitter and they're like, well, I thought you guys were libertarian. Why aren't you for Gary Johnson? And we keep pointing out that, A, this this is not the time to, for the, to go for that third party vote. This is he isn't going to win. But he is such an establishment Trojan horse. OK, he, he just recently came out and endorsed carbon taxes, saying he believes in man-made global warming, that he wants this free market carbon taxes. He's for private businesses being forced to bake cakes uh, for the prison industrial complex. And he also chose um, the anti-Second Amendment former governor of Massachusetts, William Weld, as his running mate. OK, and so he only just the other day was the very first instance of him uh, having anything bad to say about Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. So he is an establishment Trojan horse, and that's what they do, is they, they give you this third option. Oh, it's not left-right, but here's the third option. But right now, that party has been infiltrated by a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. I agree. And not only that, but we've seen third-party candidates that they have similar ideology with the mainstream person running. The only thing that that does is ensure that there's a, there's a fraction of that vote going to this third party, and it puts the other person into power. People need to wake up and see that. This is exactly. an absolute Trojan horse. And I don't know a lot about Gary Johnson. He keeps popping up in my Facebook feed. Um, and we get that people are frustrated. They don't really know. They're getting a lot of misinformation, but the good news is you can come here we're going to give you the truth and uh you know you hit it on the head well and that's the thing is like i always vote libertarian just kind of down the line especially on local elections just just because i'm always one of those i'm not going to vote for the lesser of two evils kind of people but even i could see the writing on the wall with this going wow this this is strictly put out there the fact that they're even giving you the possibility that a third candidate has a has an opportunity at this time around lets you know that they are trying to steal votes away from Donald Trump, because this will be people who say, oh, I don't want to vote for the lesser of two evils. I'm going to go to the third party. It's all to take those votes away from this candidates who actually have a chance to win. Mm -hmm. And it just amazes me how on all fronts they are att attacking Donald Trump. Meanwhile, it actually comes out this week uh, about Huma Abedin uh, editing this anti-Semitic <laughs> journal or this radical Muslim journal for more than a decade right. while she is Hillary Clinton's closest aide. Uh, we have video of Hillary Clinton praising the exalted Cyclops, uh, Senator Robert Byrd, okay, who's the KKK leader. Grandmaster. Yeah, he was a huge recruiter of oh. new members to the KKK party. Uh, her husband, Bill Clinton, <clears throat> at Senator Byrd's funeral, making excuses for him. Oh, well, you had to join the KKK to become, a, to get elected. Right. Like, yeah, because the, they, <coughs> they were founded by the Democratic Party. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I get that. But that the man never changed his stripes. It's amazing to see this. You know, West Virginia, that good old boy network. I'm from a state where we have that, too. And let me tell you, the KKK isn't required to get people into office, even in those good old boy states. And the fact that she's making excuses for him, but Trump is somehow the racist bigot, is amazing. It's amazing. You mentioned Huma. We've covered her at length this week. This woman is radical. She spent her entire life, absence of the age of two, in Saudi Arabia until she went to GW, my alma mater. And it's like she's worshipped as a god there. It's amazing. Uh, but the woman is definitely um, knee-deep in the Muslim Brotherhood, backed by the Saudis, and yet Trump is the problem here. He's the, he's the major issue. He's the, he's the, you know, the evil guy, if you right. will. It's amazing. Well, oh. and Hillary Clinton knows that the media that she owns and has wrapped around her evil little demonic finger, mm -hmm. she knows that they're never going to point out her and her husband's um, praising of this KKK member mm -hmm. or, you know, the fact that she flip-flopped on the civil rights movement as a Goldwater girl, mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's just many instances of this. Uh, or that, you know, they want to push away the fact that Huma Abedin left uh, top secret materials in a burn bag right there <laughs> in her car. It wasn't even locked and, you know, right. asked, a, asked an aide to go put it in the trunk. And, you know, all of these things, it's all to divert attention from the real corruption that's going on with Hillary Clinton. And then she comes out thinking that she can just 
tie Donald Trump to some conspiracy theorist websites. Mm -hmm. I mean, nine billion, I think, mm -hmm. Drudge Report got nine billion uh, unique traffic hits in one month alone. I don't know how many people we have. I know Breitbart has like 31 million right. uh, subscribers. So we're all just racist. People want to know the truth. And, you know, they're really waking up. It's, it's such an amazing time to be alive, you know. Leanne, looking at Nigel Farage meeting Donald Trump yesterday in Jackson, Mississippi, it was like Batman meeting Superman. I couldn't have been, you know, it's just amazing. They're losing the narrative. So she goes back to this old finger pointing, you racist, you bigot. It's like she took a speech out of 1992 and recycled it. They'd they need to get another narrative. This one right. isn't working. It's too old and tired, just like she is. You know, she looked like she's about to fall over today, but she's she's saying that it's a national inquirer thing that she's, you know, it's it's amazing. Oh, yeah. No, she didn't actually address any of the rumors. She didn't say it's not true, but all she did was show everyone that she could open up a pre-opened pickle jar. That's who <laughs> I want for my president. Oh, and she has a vagina. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Ashley Beckford reporting for Infowars.com. Now, I trigger people a lot when I wear this Hillary for Prison t-shirt, and I have to say I quite enjoy it. Usually they think that it's a Hillary for President shirt, and then they're shocked when they realize that I'm not with her. And the reason why I'm not with her is because of all of her lies. Everyone should know about Hillary's lies by now. They should know about the Clinton Foundation and how they stole all the money from the Haiti disaster relief. They should know about Benghazi. They should know about her treasonous scandal with her email server. And they should realize that Hillary does deserve to go to prison. But a lot of people aren't willing to accept that narrative. They aren't willing to realize that Hillary is the enemy of actually minorities. And they want to believe the lie that there are no minority support for Donald Trump. And that's just not true. What the truth is, is that there are a lot of people out there who don't have the courage or are unwilling to support Trump for whatever reason, whether they're, you know, longtime Democratic supporters for their whole lives, and they just can't get off that urban pl plantation. They can't get off the urban plantation that Dinesh D'Souza talks about in Hillary's America. Well, the bottom line is this. I've got examples for you of people who are never going to change. They're never going to get over and get on the Trump train. And I have examples of Trump and his supporters and how they're now reaching out to black voters. And since Barack Obama took office, the amount of African Americans living in poverty has risen by 1.4 million. Black home ownership has dropped from 47 percent to 41 percent. And this country is hurting. You know, minorities are hurting. Veterans are hurting. Our police officers are hurting. And, you know, you, you tune into the DNC and they're speaking in fluffy superlatives that everything's fine and, sure. and everything's perfect. And quite frankly, I've never seen a party more disconnected from what the American people want. What brings you here today? Well, I was coming for the Black Lives Matter protest, mm -hmm. but I'm not able to connect, so I accidentally said, okay, the Donald Trump campaign started at 7.30. I needed to get a free ticket because it's not anymore online. Right. And I finally crossed with somebody that had a free ticket, so now I'm going to go to the back of the line. <laughs> okay, so you're not a Trump supporter? You're just here to find out what Trump's talking about? Yeah, I would like to know. No, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm a Hillary right. supporter. Oh, okay. Yes. So you were saying you didn't like this shirt. Uh, Hillary for prison. So why do you think uh, Trump should go to prison? <laughs> well, I'm just not seeing what it said. Hillary for prison. And oh, they, okay. Yeah, well, Trump hasn't did anything for all the all the different nationalities here in the United States. I mean, it's a lot of us hurting, especially Black Lives Matter. Now, if lobbyists have been infiltrating our government this long, what do you think if, if a person has to go in there and change it? Hillary is only one person. I trust her to compare, uh, compare to the backers, the supporters, the community nationwide to keep Hillary responsible, just like President Obama. But I don't give Trump a second. I won't even give my, him a second chance. Give Donald Trump a chance. I say this to the African-American community. Give Donald Trump a chance. We will turn it around. We will make your streets safe so when you walk down the street, you don't get shot, which is what's happening now. So I hope you now have a better perspective of how the Trump campaign is not only reaching out to black voters, but all minority communities and everyone in general in America. Anyone who cares about freedom, the Constitution, and keeping the republic together. 
The bottom line is this. We should all get on the Trump train and end this racial division that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama have been fomenting for all these years. Stay tuned for more special reports at Infowars.com. Look, I voted uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a, uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. Um, and I do think you have to control your borders. Mexico is such an important uh, problem. Mexican government's policies are pushing migration north. There isn't any uh, sensible approach except to do what we need to do simultaneously, you know, secure our borders with technology, personnel, uh, physical barriers if necessary in some places, and we need to have tougher employer sanctions, and we need to try to incentivize Mexico to do... All Americans not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more, by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace, as recommended by the commission headed by a former congresswoman. They're not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. And the president has asked the FBI to launch a very concerted effort against gangs everywhere. Uh, as you've already understood, you are about to hear about a very exciting discovery, and maybe even a momentous one. A second Earth-like planet, just a mere 4.243 light years away, has been discovered. A distance that would take the average human using current propulsion technology hurtling through space at 20,000 miles per hour, give or take 100,000 years to travel to, has quite possibly been discovered right in our own backyard in the habitable zone of a neighboring system known as Proxima Centauri. Dubbed Kepler 452b, the Earth-like planet it is roughly 60% larger than Earth. The temperature that you would have on the surface of this planet if there is no atmosphere is actually minus 40 degrees, which is not spectacular. But, of course, we all want this planet to have an atmosphere, and if it has an atmosphere, it is actually pushing up the temperature through the greenhouse effect above zero degrees and in the liquid water habitable zone. Of course, the vampiric elite of planet Earth are beside themselves with world-conquering glee. Mark Zuckerberg and his Russian internet billionaire counterpart, Yuri Milner, are hatching a plan to escape the confines of the Earth-bound hell pit the elite created and preside over for greener pastures. But now we can transcend it with light beams, light sails, and the lightest spacecraft ever built. We can launch a mission to Alpha Centauri within a generation. Dr. Edith Weeks explains from the book titled Outer Space Development, International Relations in Space Law, although having been extremely successful, NASA is being constructed as incapable, as a failed government bureaucracy, indeed as somehow effeminate. In addition, there is a trend wherein private companies contracted with the government are gradually beginning to take over the business of space missions. These processes processes regarding space exploration, space travel are consistent with my argument that part of the hyper-privatization mandate is to transfer many of NASA's assets over to the private sector. Space missions to other celestial bodies, large and small, in the past were carried out exclusively by government entities. Over the next decade, we will work with experts here at ESO and elsewhere to get as much information as possible about the Proxima Centauri planet. Perhaps as noted 
even including whether it might bear life. Yuri Miller, Stephen Hawking, and Mark Zuckerberg oversee our project. It doesn't look like a space shuttle or, or Voyager. The ultimate spacecraft is going to be about the size of this, maybe uh, uh, quite a bit lighter and uh, uh, having much more functionality. Space travel was an ambitious endeavor that brought millions of people together. Humankind sat transfixed on Neil Armstrong's giant leap for mankind. Now, like everything else that has been hijacked by the emerging New World Order, the human prospect of traveling to distant worlds has been consolidated and relegated to a handful of hubris-riddled elite hell-bent on the survival of their own selfish goals. In your estimation, What's the probability of finding intelligent alien life in the next 20 years and why? The probability is low. Probably. May they one day travel at the speed of light only to finally arrive on a planet inhabited by 50-foot-tall patriots. John Bound for Infowars.com. Welcome back to the Nightly News. Owen Schroyer reporting. And ladies and gentlemen, in the face of the liberalization of higher education, the University of Chicago has told their incoming students to suck it up. We don't condone safe spaces. The University of Chicago has sent the incoming class of 2020 a letter making it very clear that they will find no safe spaces in their intellectual journey at the University of Chicago. Citing the letter from the Dean of Students, members of our community are encouraged to speak, write, listen, challenge, and learn without fear of censorship. You will find that we expect members of our community to be engaged in rigorous debate, discussion, and even disagreement, and at times this may challenge you and even cause discomfort. Our commitment to academic freedom means that we do not support so-called trigger warnings. We do not cancel invited speakers because their topics might prove controversial, and we do not condone the, creational, the creation of intellectual safe spaces where individuals can retreat from ideas and perspective at odds with their own. Diversity of opinion and background is a fundamental strength of our community. The members of our community must have the freedom to espouse and explore a wide range of ideas. This is from John J. Ellison, the Dean of Students at the University of Chicago. We salute you, John J. Ellison. Uh, this also echoes the letter from Dr. Everett Piper, the president of Oklahoma Wesleyan University, who says, I run a university, not a daycare. And of course, this is what some of these universities are turning into now when you get to complain about anything you want and the administration is going to cater to you. Oh, because they're so scared you might be offended. It's not about learning anything anymore. It's not about higher education anymore. It's about walking on eggshells and making sure you don't offend anyone because this is the future that the liberals want to create. So this is the opposite side of the spectrum. Princeton University kindly requests you to stop using gender binary hate speech like freshmen. Well, apparently biology is now... Uh, hateful because it's based on gender. So I guess our own biology hates us all because it's based on a uh, gender rules. And, and they even have a list, folks. Princeton University has come out with a list of words that they don't want you to say. This includes actress, anchorman, businessman, cameraman, cleaning lady, co-ed, forefathers, freshman, mailman, male nurse, managers, mankind, salesman. Oh! Oh! I was just triggered by those words. Unbelievable. It goes on. The Human Resources Department from Princeton has now issued tips about how you can avoid offending someone with your speech. How about this? Here's a tip for you. Be real. And if you don't like who I am, then walk away. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. If you're afraid of free speech, move to a communist country. Then see how much you like free speech. This is going on at universities all around our nation, folks. Scripps College, Princeton, Bard College, Boston College, Brown University, Dartmouth, Harvard, John Hopkins, NYU, Purdue, Sarah Lawrence, University of San Diego, University of Missouri are all considering replacing training courses with diversity management and diversity implementation plans. These are not, and, and not only are these for students, this is for the faculty. So universities are now running re-education programs. Instead of training their faculty, they would rather re-educate them on diversity, on tolerance, and on offensive speech, and the privilege of heterosexuality, the privilege of nationality, the privilege of being a white male. 
all of these privileges. You know what? We all have a privilege in the United States of America. You know what that is? That's the right to free speech. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter how long your hair is or what race or what gender you identify with. The privilege in America is the right to free speech. It's the First Amendment. Now, I don't know how this gets lost in translation with the higher education liberal universities, but we see it happening right now. Even the Washington Post, Kathleen Rampell, has now reported liberal intolerance is on the rise at America's college campuses. Folks, the liberalization of higher education is right in our face, and we at Infowars.com salute the University of Chicago. We salute the University of Oklahoma Wesleyan for standing up in the face of liberalization of higher education for the right to free speech of their students, of their incoming students, of their alumni, of their faculty and staff, and for all Americans around the world who are sick and tired of our free speech being trampled on, we salute anybody who stands up for free speech in the face of the liberalization of our country. Wow, Owen, oh, those are some incredible headlines. I can't believe this is the United States of America. Well, it is shocking, and it's just sad because what you have here is victims. All these people are being victimized by the liberal agenda, and I just want to fight it. I just want people to see reality, but more than anything, not be afraid to speak their minds. I mean, that's what we're really seeing here. This is control of speech. This is making you afraid to speak your mind, mm -hmm. making you afraid to look into people who speak their mind, that there might be a punishment lurking around the corner, that there might be some bad, uh, you know, negative response to you being a free thinker or a free speaker. And, and this is a true threat to this country. I right. mean, we need dissenting views in this country. Absolutely. That's how we can discern what's real and what's fake, what's truth and what's not. Right, and that's the whole plan is basically destroying the minds of the youth so that when they get out there in the real world, they're very anti-American. They don't care about free speech. They don't understand why the First Amendment and the Second Amendment are so important. Um, here's another article. Northwestern State University is giving... Uh, Two days, they're granting students there, they get two hours of free speech per week, and guess what? They get to do it inside of safe spaces. So there's three predetermined locations where they are allowed to have free speech for two hours. And isn't this like the free speech zones yeah. that we see happening at these protests? Yeah. A free speech zone? I'm sorry, I thought the United States of America was a free speech zone. Exactly. People should have fought against that when they first implemented it. I believe it was outside of the RNC. And then, of course, now this, is, uh, this type of activity is costing universities. So we might see a little pushback, like you mentioned in the report. The teachers there at the uh, University of Chicago are saying, look, we don't care about your safe spaces. You're going to get offended here. But also, the Black Lives Matter movement has officially cost Mizzou 2,100 students. Now, you'll remember that this was after those large protests that they held there last year. Um, well, now their, their flagship Columbia campus has officially lost 23% of its freshman class, which was even worse than what they thought. Well, and they've also lost a lot of booster money, too. Money coming into the football program, uh, they lost a lot of that because of a boycott um, that, was, that was being talked about. So, But you know what's amazing to me about this, Leanne, is let's see, let's see America's response. And we're already starting to see it. Mizzou has lost enrollment. Mizzou has lost money from boosters. And, and I'm from the state of Missouri. I went to the University of Missouri uh, almost, it was nine years ago now. Mizzou was cool. Mizzou was popular. Everybody wanted to go to Mizzou. Now, in the state of Missouri, people look down on Mizzou. People are ashamed of Mizzou. People are embarrassed of Mizzou. I know people who said if they weren't a senior at Mizzou or a junior at Mizzou last year, they would have left. Right. The, the, the Black Lives Matter protests and the liberalization at this point and the liberalization has ruined that university. And a lot of the alma maters, one of which I used to uh, work for uh, a journalism graduate and a law degree from the University of Missouri. He's embarrassed. He can't believe the shenanigans that have gone down there. So let's see America's response. My guess is Mizzou's enrollment and all of these other universities trying to trying to portray this liberalization image, their enrollment their dollars are going to go down. University of Chicago, Oklahoma Wesleyan, and other universities who are willing to take a stand against the liberalization, against the attack on free speech, my guess is they get more donors and more enrollment down the road. Oh, and I agree with your predictions. Let's just switch gears real quick. So we're seeing already how this shutting down of free speech, like you said, you know, how dare you be a free speaker? 
This is what we're going to get in Hillary's America, because Dr. Drew dared to speak out and, and make some comments about Hillary's health and the, the, the 1950s care that she was receiving. And now he has been dropped. His show has been dropped because he dared to speak out against the Queen Demon. And doesn't that illustrate exactly what Hillary's America is? Like you said, you speak out against the establishment, you execute your right to free speech. Guess what? You don't have a job anymore. You can't exist anymore. And, and I'll say this again. I really think that Hillary Clinton mentioning Alex Jones today and demonizing him, lying about him, mm -hmm. is a grease of the skids. They don't make a big move like that unless they have an agenda and a plan behind it. They're greasing the skids. They want to shut Alex Jones up. They want to shut InfoWars down. We need you, the people out there, to go to InfoWars.com, InfoWarsStore.com. Give us the fuel we need to defeat these tyrants. Thank you very much, Owen Shore. I'm going to let you close out the show. That was amazing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. And of course, for all your continued support, because as you can see, we are under attack. It's time for the big dogs now. We'll see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central.